Dr. Erica Aragona, thank you so much for being here tonight and sharing about your story. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. What can I say? I have absolutely loved the journey and the honor of getting to interview you and then seeing things transpire has just been phenomenal. And it's been really empowering to see so many women rise together. So I'm excited to be here today. You have interviewed many people. I follow you on social media, as I mentioned, and I constantly see you doing podcasts. One of the things that I talk about and that I know that you do, because you mentioned when you gave me dates, you batch a lot of your work, correct? I do. You know, I try to be flexible. I have my days off during the week, but I have two little kids under the age of seven. So I get working physicians and no matter what we have in our lives, we're all busy. So I try to open it up to weekends or things that are really available to women to come on board and meet me on their time. Because with entrepreneurs, you never know what you're going to get. And with news media, I have learned to be on point and ready to go at all hours of the day. I mean, last week I had to get up at 5 a.m. for a live interview. And the week before I was interviewing at 8 p.m. right after work and coming home. And so I think that as long as you can meet people where they are, you're going to have a better success rate overall. Tell us about the media. I don't want to hear trade secrets because you can do consulting work if the people want to get a hold of you. Because I know all of this takes time and energy that you have to put into finding the media connections and whatnot. What would you suggest it for other doctors that are interested? You know, I think the biggest thing is to really brand brand successfully and have a landing page. I can't tell you how important it was for me when I first started. I didn't have one place where anyone could go. And I had a really exciting interview for Women's Health Magazine. And when the editor contacted me, they said, well, what's your website? We'd love to check you out. And I had to say, oh, I don't have that. I have an Instagram page and I just started it. And then I heard nothing. And I thought, well, you know what? This was a great opportunity that's missed. How can I change it the next time around? So I really focused on branding, how to set myself apart from not only other physicians in media, but specific to my role as a women's health physician and a family medicine physician, and how I like to have a younger population reach out to me. So I spent a lot of time looking at market research and how I could stand out and be unique. And I think that's really important for anyone who wants to get into social media because there's so much out there and you have to really truly have that niche or you won't stand out. So I branded hard and I set up my website and have now linked all of my different social media platforms to that website. And thankfully that's how I was able to have people reach out to me for writing projects for international magazines and for speaking on national news now. And had I not had that one place where they could find me, I don't think it would have happened. So a lot of the times when I get that question, it's, okay, what have you done so far? It's okay if you don't have much, it's okay. But we really need to refine exactly what you wanna talk about, how you wanna stand out, how you wanna make a difference, and then market that in a way so people know when they go to your website or say you wanna start with one social media platform, they know exactly what they're going to find. So putting the pictures up on a professional front, giving them what you want to showcase as opposed to the pictures that I used to have on Facebook of me, you know, as a resident exhausted in the call room. It didn't translate into a professional who wanted to have these speaking opportunities. So when I have women who speak with me now and want consultation and advice, I really start from the beginning. What do you have and how can we take it to five levels more? I don't want to take you to the next level. I want to take you beyond so that everything is honed in and you have those opportunities knocking at your door, emailing you for a chance instead of you reaching out because there's a lot out there. And if people can't find you, it's really hard to make a name for yourself and reach out to them. It's much better if they can find you. Erica, tell us the timeline. I know that you have given that timeline to me, but I want the audience to hear because sometimes I feel like we're on social media and we're posting and we're posting and we're not getting anywhere. I know myself, I've been there before. And now I really try to have intention when I'm spending my time. But tell us, you didn't start that long ago. I guess what I'm trying to say is, guys, there's hope. There so is, you know. So I started about a year ago and I only had a personal Facebook page. I had nothing else. I had created an Instagram page and I didn't even know the login. And I took a female physician, empowering women physicians course headed by Dr. Sunny Smith. I actually met you through female physician entrepreneurs and the motivation and the social connection drove me to just jump for it and go for it. 
And I was pretty shy. And a lot of people don't know that about me is I didn't like social media. I really didn't. I felt like it was fake and it didn't translate into what I was trying to do as a provider. When COVID hit, it completely threw me for a 180 and I did all telemedicine and I found so many people weren't coming to see me or other doctors and all the media was focused on was misinformation. And that wasn't okay. I wasn't okay with sitting there being silent. So I took the course, I jumped in, I hired a coach. I had the awesome opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Hala Sabri, who really coached me on how she got into the media and on television. And I started making genuine connections. And that for me is the one thing, Sharon, that I genuinely stand by is why I think I've gotten to where I've gotten. You know, you can brand all you want. You can have these websites, these forums, these platforms, you can post every day. But if you don't have a tribe behind you, there's only so much you can do. So my website with interviewing women was genuinely built out of my true desire to highlight women, physicians, other entrepreneurs who are making a really badass difference in this world. Not a little one. I mean, they're changing the world. And how can I elevate that? And then after the interview, stay connected, meet them at other forums or meetings and help connect them. You know, I've met a woman who loves cooking and she's my mentor. We talk as my accountability partner weekly. And I met another woman who wanted to do cooking and Pairing them together and finding those connections has helped me succeed because now I have this network that keeps growing where I can help other women succeed. So I've had a lot of opportunities come my way because of that. And I've had really, really cool opportunities to interview like the CEO of FIGS one-on-one -on -one just because I knew a physician who had set up the meeting and called me last minute to jump on the call. So that really leads me to the second thing is you have to be ready at all times. And I heard that from two different physicians. One speaks on the Today Show, one speaks in LA on live news all the time. And they said, you know what, Erica, if you want to do this, you have to be ready to go. And with young kids, is this something you're ready for? I wasn't. And I've taken these opportunities and I've used them, but I got tired quickly. So thankfully, I'm now getting enough callbacks from different news media centers, agents. I actually got to work with the producer, one of the original producers of the E! Network who founded it. So cool. And what was neat is I, I can now pick and choose the times that I go live. So I pick after my kids are tucked in bed or they've already, you know, started their homework and they're eating dinner. And I can slip away for five minutes and film on point in my studio. And it has drastically changed the way that I show up because I'm ready. And I'm joyful because it's not interfering with what I'm doing. As a lot of us know, to be on live news, you have to be ready to go. So to have that outline and, and now these resources of people reaching out to me has been huge. For those starting off, how can people reach you? How can they follow you? Well, I think the, the best way is my landing page. So my website. So it's dr-erica.com, dr-erica.com. And that has all of my links to all of my different social media where I've had different successes with talk, believe it or not. Most of my views, all of my videos that have hit a few million have been on TikTok of all the platforms, but I've gotten really good branding opportunities. So I, I really encourage people who are interested to go to my website. That's where I have a direct direct link. You can email me as well. And it's Dr. Or it's Erica at drerica.com for the email too. The nice thing is I'll reach out on all of my DMs. If you find me on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, I'm on all of them. I'm even on Twitter, but I, what I like to do is help women physicians succeed and grow. So the best way is my website, but branding yourself is key and, and being flexible to reach crowds that you'd never think. I never thought I'd hit you know, three and a half million views on a silly video that I made that would then lead to brand and product representation and paid opportunities. And to now speak on women's health forums online and have investment and, and being paid opportunities in this has been really fun. So my goal is to show other women physicians that you can go from nothing and you can go from no tech experience. I mean, I have had my laptop crash while interviewing a, a female physician. I have had the power go out. I'm filming on my phone right now because of a hiccup and I'm in my one of my side offices because I teach at a medical school too and a student needed me tonight. And you know what? I think the important thing is flexibility and genuine love for what you do. If you are genuine, you're going to get the work. 
You just have to show people that your heart is in it and you're going to put forth the very, very best. So make those connections and keep that tribe with you because it has been so fun watching all these other women grow. And the thing that I always end on my interviews is, you know, when one woman shines, we all shine. And when one woman is, is elevated, we all elevate. So why wouldn't we want to rise together? And I mean that with all my heart. Erica, that is so beautiful. Before you leave, I want to hear about three tips that women physicians are making, trying to do the branding. What do you see common mistakes? The inauthenticity, I think, is one. If you're trying to fit a mold that you think society wants and social media wants, you're going to fail. So instead, sit down and write down a list until you can't come up with anything else of what makes you you and genuinely hone in on what makes you unique and that you can focus on to separate yourself from the pack. Another mistake that I've seen a lot is people pay way too much for services and get duped by so many people saying they can help you in social media. I've had a lot of agents reach out to me, a lot of producers and executives, and even backed by decent companies. They have really good repertoires, but they want so much money up front and you have to really do your homework and research. And this is where your network comes in again on vetting those companies so that you really stand by someone who will support you and isn't in it just for a quick dollar. And then I think the third thing is content. Making content that matters is really important and being relevant matters, staying ahead of the trends and following each platform uniquely. Very, very different audiences are on each of these internet platforms. They're very, very unique. And if you make one video to save time and put them on all of them, it's not going to work. So make yourself a really good video, but make it four or five different ways or hire a team that can help you like I have to save yourself time, but to still put that content out that people are like, oh, I want to listen to that. I want to see that. I want to watch more. And when you do that, it will work and it will be successful. And I want to be on the other side hearing about it. So if any of you watching have questions, please feel free to reach out to me via email. Check out my site that way. It's the best way to reach me. But follow along because I love doing one-on-ones and consulting women on how to help them succeed the way that I have. It's been a really fun journey. Erica, thanks so much. Do you want to say anything to the group before you go or you could Uh, stay or? Oh, just that I love you. And I think that people need to know that. I think people need to know that when I'm smiling like this and I'm excited, it's because I genuinely adore who you are. And I think people need to hear that. And women listening need to feel that genuine, authentic adoration that we have as women supporting other women because so much of the time we're torn down in society and it's not by certain groups. It's by everyone, other women too. We have the power to shift it. So really what I want the take home message to be is find the people that support you and make those connections matter. They will last a lifetime. And thank you to you, Sharon. I've watched what you've done last time with last summit. It changed my life. I actually reached out to a few women on there and was able to grow just because of that. So everyone watching, take advantage of this. This is such a, good content, make the most of it and you're going to succeed. And thanks, Sharon. It's been fun.